There's absolutely no reason for these dudes to be online 24 seven, just trying to make us seem like we're horrible people when all we did was give birth to them and half these chicks gave them a place to stay and half of them been waiting on a damn ring for nine years, nine, 10 years. And they ain't got one yet. But y'all telling the world, we just trying to be husbands. We just trying to find love. Well, why ain't you married the chick you been shacking up with for the last eight years? All right. So as far as Passport Bros mainstream, here we have a story coming right out of CNN Brazil with our favorite Passport Bro, Austin Holloman. So as you know, I don't speak uh, Portuguese, nor would I ever bother to learn, since I really don't care. So um, I'm using Apple's Translate feature. It says, MP clears alleged practice of sex tourism by American YouTuber in Bahia. Okay, so I guess Bahia is a place. So then let's read the next part. The next part says... Austin Holloman made a series of videos in Salvador explaining how easy it would be to maintain relations with women in Brazil. Okay, now let's go down and let's read here. Okay. They uh, clipped one of his YouTube videos, but um, thus far I haven't seen anything to be really concerned about. Now, as far as going back there, I don't think I'd be going back there. If I was him, I'd stay in either Thailand or Philippines, but he already said that he didn't think the Philippines was for him. My guess is he wasn't really attracted to the level of poverty there, which is kind of odd considering, you know, Brazil's pretty damn poor itself with all those favelas and everything. But, um, you know, I'll leave that for another story. It says the public prosecutor's office of Bahia, MP hyphen Ba began on Monday the 20th an investigation to inst investigate an alleged practice of sex tourism crime by the American YouTuber Austin Holloman. Now, first of all, let's just understand something. It's alleged that there was a sex tourism crime. Now, first of all, let's understand what that uh, actually means. Now, as far as I know, after having watching his videos... And after actually seeing his videos and then even seeing the uh, interview he did on Fox 26, I've seen no crime. He specifically said that he felt that, uh, uh, and then he apologized for it, which I never would have done. But he said that uh, it's easier to date women in Brazil. Now, some people could take that to say, okay, well, he said that uh, Brazilian women are easy. Uh, guess what? That's not a crime. Now, you know, I, I know a lot of other countries don't have uh, freedom of speech, but as far as I know, that's not a crime. Uh, that said, if you were going to say that sex tourism in and of itself was a crime, that would basically mean that you're claiming that prostitution was involved. At no time watching any of his videos did I ever see any amount of money being offered for the solicitation of prostitution. I'm fairly certain you didn't either, and I'm fairly certain that if somebody did allege that he was paying for prostitution, I'm fairly certain you'd have a bitch of a time trying to come up with video evidence, written evidence, or even audio evidence. I think you wouldn't find be able to come up with any of it because I don't think it's true. Uh, so as far as allegations allegations must be proven as far as i know an allegation of sex tourism which is probably one of the lowest of concern there's no extradition for that so as long as he doesn't actually go back to brazil i don't think he has much to worry about but um if i was him i wouldn't be going back there because the thing about it is um this looks like somebody tried to make a mountain out of a molehill. And it's like, again, I would have never apologized to them because the thing about it is people can talk about you all they want, but until they actually get information out of you, until they actually can get you on camera, like, for instance, the Fox 26 interview, the more and more I look at it, I think even though it was a good chance to present your side of story, at this point, when you look up Passport Bros, his face comes right up, just like it did in this uh, article. If you look up Passport Bros, 
that video clip of that loser, Isaiah, whatever the hell his last name is, trying to trap him in these ridiculous rhetorical questions and calling Passport Bros. Johns and blah, blah, blah. All of that stuff comes right up. So I really, first of all, there's certain news organizations, I wouldn't give you anything. Not unless I myself was controlling the interview. I wouldn't give you anything. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people are very slow to speak when they uh, have some ordeal or some situation. I wouldn't have given them anything. Especially Fox. And CNN and MSNBC. As far as I'm concerned, all of them are lame stream media. But uh, it is what it is. It says the public prosecutor's office by here began on Monday, 20th, an investigation to investigate an alleged practice of sex tourism crime by the American YouTuber Austin Holloman. Between the end of 2022 and the beginning of 2023, Holloman published a series of videos on the streets of Salvador in which he reports how easy it would be to maintain relations with a woman in Brazil. I don't know about you, but I don't see a crime there. In one of the cases, he tells about how he was walking on the street and was approached by a woman and that after five seconds, they were kissing. According to him, this would be normal in Brazil. I don't know about you, but I don't see a crime there. I, I, I don't know. Maybe you can see things that I can't see because you don't know how to read. But um, I don't see a crime there. Okay, let's keep going. It says later he took her number and they scheduled to leave. The YouTuber claims that the girl was rubbing on her arm and that she would have said that the boy was affectionate in addition to having asked her about her life and her family. On Holloman's YouTube channel, which has more than 50,000 subscribers, there are also posts claiming that Brazilian women want financial stability for dating in addition to exhibition images with women in bikinis. There are videos with the same theme in other countries. I don't know about you, but I don't see a crime yet. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, let's see, translate. Uh, the influencer encourages foreigners who are watching the video to take their passports and come to Brazil. After being the target of criticism, Holloman deleted one of the videos and said on social networks that a full of Brazilians will ruin Brazil's reputation if they keep attacking me. I think there was a mistranslation there. I love the people of Brazil, but these negative people need to leave me alone, he continued. Sought by CNN, the public prosecutor's office says that it established a procedure to investigate the alleged practice of sex tourism crime on his part. The information is being properly analyzed for the adoption of the, okay, let's keep going, of the, private, what, what, let's see what this says. It says, of the appropriate measures. So, uh, Providencias Cabivis, whatever. Okay, so last, and this is the end. It says, CNN also tries to contact the YouTuber, but he but has not yet received a return. You know, I, in this case, me personally, I don't think I would give them anything. I, I don't think I would give them anything. They're, they're trying to make a mountain out of a molehill. This story, almost nobody has really seen it, with the exception of Passport Bros. I don't think anybody's paying attention to it, with the exception of American Passport Bros looking at it. And I, me personally, I, I just don't see giving CNN anything. I just don't see it. Furthermore, I wouldn't be going back to Brazil. Now, you know, it's funny. I've always uh, talked about how much I love Philippines, how much I love uh, Thailand and Japan and South Korea and even China. But there's too many problems with South America. I don't like South America. As far as I'm concerned, it's too close to America. And the mere fact that it's too close to America means that it's already been polluted and poisoned with liberal American feminism. And I think that's absolutely accurate considering what actually happened. I have no idea who started this because I, I don't know if it was that this Brazilian feminist was watching his channel and decided to attack him or if it was one of these pathetic rat squirrel-looking rat 
stink, scum, pieces of rat shit here in America who may have contacted them and told them about his channel to harass him. I don't know. I don't know what the situation was. However, what I can say is, as far as prostitution goes, I've seen no evidence of that. As far as a crime of tourism, of sex tourism, I've seen no evidence of that. You see, if you're going to try to say that it's sex tourism, you've got to be showing like, okay, that the person is coming there specifically for sex and that they're willing to pay money for it. Even in the criminal justice system, there's even when they do those prostitution stings, usually there has to be a solicitor of sex for money, and usually there has to be a specific value or a specific amount of money proclaimed. But most of these people, they don't care about the law. They just want to talk shit and they're looking for content because their channels suck. So, you know, that's just what it is. Now, it's funny. Some of these people, I've noticed, you know, what they do is they take other people's words and they try to use them. You won't hear them take my words like that and say it because I'm telling the truth about them. They're losers. They're losers. They got like 2,000 subs if they're lucky, less than 10,000 subs if they're luckier. Most of them can't run a channel. They have nothing to talk about except for what someone else is doing. You'll never hear them using what I'm saying right now. You'll never hear that. You won't hear them remixing it. You won't hear them clipping it. You won't hear them trimming it. These are losers who are looking for content strategy trying to make a couple of dimes off YouTube. That's what they are. That's, let's just be perfectly honest about it. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so uh, exclusive and restrictive of who I consider a passport bro. Because there's a lot of people who are just jumping on to the trend. Now, what I can say about the trend, I think the trend is slowly dying down. And that's partially because we're in that gap between midwinter recess and spring break. You can bet, and you best believe, that during spring break... And spring break's always wild because you're dealing with college-aged uh, males and you're dealing with college-aged females. Spring break's always wild. You can bet that there's going to be a tick-up in Passport Bro content. And you can bet during the summer that that tick-up's going to be even more dramatic. You can bet. But for right now, it kind of seems to me that some of the, um, how should I say, some of that energy seems to be dying off a little bit. And that, that's, just, that's just how I see it. I, I could be wrong, but that's how I see it. Um, a lot of the people who jumped into Passport Bros content because they were looking for content strategy, um, some of them were able to sew together enough TikTok videos and enough YouTube clips. Some of them were able to build a channel based on it. But it's really no different than those people who built their channels based on Kevin Samuel's content or based on the content of another YouTuber. The reality is, at the end of the day, they have nothing to talk about, they have nothing to say, and then on top of that, they really don't have enough people following them. And it's very difficult for them to build channels. Especially the haters. The haters of Passport Bros have lost. They've lost big time. They lost so badly... Until now, you have women from America complaining that the women from America who attacked Filipinas and attacked Thai women in these TikTok videos, which backfired on them, these women are complaining that those women in these other countries are basically running them out of those countries, and they're saying, yeah, we don't want you here because you talk bad on us. The Filipinas and the Thai specifically, they don't appreciate those stupid TikTok videos. They don't appreciate it. So that it is what it is. Now they welcome the passport bros. The Phil we've already I've showed you enough videos. That's why I love these clips. I love stitching. The the Filipinas, the Thai, they've made enough videos talking about how much they want the passport bros come right on down there. They're looking for husbands. Now, this whole nonsense about Brazil, I refuse to believe that the Brazilian government is warning Brazilian women that there are American men coming to Brazil looking for wives. Now, you could get me maybe to accept that they may be warning these women that there's uh, sex tourism coming down there or that there's men looking for prostitution. But the thing about it is prostitution isn't illegal in Brazil. It's 
not illegal in that it's legal for a woman to do whatever she wants, except they don't want organization. They don't want prostitution organized. They don't want pimps. They don't want uh, any level of organization, the whorehouses and such. They don't want any of that. I totally understand that. But uh, the reality is I see no crime here. I know there's a couple of American strags who want there to be a crime. They want this to blow up. They want it to be bad because they already know that they are losing their plan B. They know that their plan B has gotten their passports and is headed overseas for greener pastures. They know that the game has changed. They know that the field has changed. Since Kevin Samuels, since COVID came and Kevin Samuels popped up and Kevin Samuels read them the riot act in front of the rest of us and the rest of us picked up the slack even after he died, they thought that this was going to end when he died. They were so, they, they just thought that this was all over. They thought that the rhetoric was over and then look, Fresh and Fit picked up on it. Andrew Tate uh, rose up. I mean, it's listen, it's not going to stop because the, the problem is the men are having the exact same conversation. Whether they're having it using all of this rhetoric with the, the stats and the numbers and the facts and the newspaper articles or whether they're having that same conversation in a completely ignorant and nonchalant way where they're just throwing out accusations the bottom line is, one way or another, they're still having these conversations. Channels like Fresh and Fit exacerbate these issues against these uh, these domestic strikes. <laughs> you know, people like Andrew Tate, like Andrew Tate, has inspired more people to be just like him. And if, even if there is no Andrew Tate, there'll still be somebody else because these men are not going to stop. They're going to keep talking. They have every right to talk. They have the right to conversation. And in that talk, what you're seeing is a loss of resources that you normally would have had. And you're seeing a loss of opportunity that you normally would have had. If it hadn't been for Kevin Samuels, if it hadn't been for the Manosphere, if it hadn't been for this level of rhetoric. Cleanup bros, the stepdaddies, the cleanup bros, They'd still be willing and they'd be, they'd be wallowing like pigs and shit. And they'd still be willing. They'd be a coalition of the willing. But now they think twice. The plan B guys who are plan B, who the women uh, marginalized them, the women sidelined them, friend zoned them. Those plan B guys said, no, nah, I'm going to get my passport. I'm going to head out. Those plan B guys were supposed to be the leftover men. But you know what? Here's the problem. Men don't get leftover. See, this is not like in Japan and China. Yeah, I, I wish I hadn't said that because you know where this is going. In China, they actually made up this term called Sheng Nu. Sheng Nu means leftover woman. And they're saying that after you're about, uh, what is it, uh, 27 between 27 and 35, they refused to marry you because they said, no, you're left over. Not only that, they, they don't want to have to deal with another man's habits that she may have picked up. So they, they call these women shung you, leftover woman, right? Now, see, in Japan, Japan, however, these guys are brutal. What these guys do is they, because see, during Christmas, they give each other cake, just like we used to do. We used to give out rum cake, right? See, in Japan, they give out these Christmas cakes when they celebrate Christmas, but, you know, they're not really Christian, and they don't really celebrate the way we do, but they're just, you know, buying gifts. They would rather give people cake. The problem is they don't eat all the cake, and the cake starts to pile up, and it becomes leftover cake. So these are Christmas cakes that become leftover cake. So what ends up happening is, if you were to ask a Japanese man, maybe a week or two after Christmas, you ask him, you say, hey, uh, would you like some leftover cake? Now, this is the same concept as Shung Nyu. But if you ask a Japanese man, would you like to have leftover cake or would you like to marry a leftover woman or have leftover cake or Christmas cake? Basically, it's all the same concept. 
he's going to look you square in the eyes. And he's basically, his eyes are going to narrow. He's going to get extremely angry. And he's going to say, no! No, I want the Christmas kicker! No! No, I want the Christmas kicker! And that's just, it, that, it is what it is. It is what it is. So a lot of these other countries, you have men who refuse to marry the women who are there. Now, as American men, we are not so discriminatory against women between 27 and 35. We're not as discriminatory as those men over there are. So those women understand that very fact, and they are anxious to see us, and they are anxious for us to come there because they know that out of us that they can get the husband that they couldn't get there. Now, why American women haven't woken up and realized that they're throwing away their best resources and letting their men leave and find greener pastures, I have no idea. But perhaps in their own egos, they have gotten so bad that they, at this point, they just don't get it. Now, and it's sad because the women who are here, who want to salvage the resources that they have out of the men here before they get their passports, those women are derided and they're called pick -me's. They're called pick -me's, pick -me's, whatever you want to call them, but they call them pick -me's And they say, oh yeah, well, you're just uh, a pick -me. And my thing is, it's like, well, if they're lucky, they might be able to get themselves a husband. All they have to do is make a man happy. But these women, at this point, refuse to make men happy. It's all about them. They're looking for your resources. They want to put their hands in your pocket. And they want to put their hands in other men's pockets. And they want to draw as much as they can out of as many men as possible. It's almost like an octopus. It's like, you remember James Bond, he had that movie Octopus. You know, you're dealing with an octopus and it's got like eight arms. It's like they have eight arms and they're trying to reach into eight guys' pockets and they're trying to pull out whatever they can get out of eight different guys. And uh, this way they have all of that to themselves. And the sad thing is, a lot of these men are simps and fools and they're dumb enough to allow this to happen to themselves. Uh, examples of that are the guys who are uh, subscribers on OnlyFans who are uh, spending all their money for pictures of feet, uh, jars that have been farted in and shipped to them by a uh, UPS or FedEx. It's really, really disgusting. It's really shameful. It's really uh, disturbing. But that it is what it is. So I've gotten way off topic, but the point is passport bros are winning. These people were so worried about winter coming that they forgot about summer. And the passport bros, they got their passport, they got their luggage, they on these flights, and they headed out for summer. So I guess the real question here is, should you keep what you're doing on the down low, or should you be loudly celebrating what you're doing? And, I've, and, 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 and it really comes down to that because now I was listening to uh, some other content creators, not just one, but I've been listening to other content creators and they're constantly saying, oh yeah, well the block is hot and you made the block hot and the passport bros made the block hot and you got to keep you down low and you got to got to be on the down low and you got to keep the block from being hot. You got to, uh, you got to, uh, um. Uh, you got to work differently and you got to move differently and you got to be quiet. And, you know, I listened to the perspective and I'm like, well, should the passport bros be quiet and silent in what they're doing? Like, let's say they go overseas and they're looking for a wife. Should they be silent and quiet about it? Or should they be doing what you see a lot of dudes on YouTube doing where they're showing off the fact that they have a wife, foreign wife, or that they have girlfriends in foreign countries. It's like, should they be moving in silence or should they be celebrating aloud? Now, some of you may say, oh yeah, you know, you should be able to do what you do simply by virtue of being a man and having the money and the resources to do what you do, but you should be silent about it. Some people would agree with that. Now, there's other people who should say, well, no, why should you have to be silent? You should be able to celebrate it. And I, I'm afraid I have to, I have to uh, uh, 
agree with the people who say that you should be able to celebrate it as much as you want, as loudly as you want, or you should be able to be silent if you want to be silent about it. When I think about all of these other groups, especially rainbow flag groups and all these other groups out there who loudly celebrate in the streets and loudly celebrate with parades and loudly celebrate what they're doing, my question is, why should you have to keep your mouth shut? These women are poor and vulnerable. Easier to manipulate. Know their place. Disadvantage our entire financial need. They want their visas. They have to be quiet. They don't know no better. That's why you have to go to developing countries to try to take their women. And it sickens me. And um, yes, they'll do what you say. She is in a dire situation because she doesn't know about much in life. And they have to bow and scrape at these men's feet. If you are a man, then brag about go to underprivileged in our world countries to get a wife, an obedient wife. You are a predator. Well, hello everybody. I'm from Thai. I'm from the Philippines. We're sitting here long ass time for a passport to come in. So where are you? We're waiting for the passport, bro. <laughs> Don't hate. 